Welcome back guys, Sherry here. Now in Breath of the Wild it just seems like we're constantly looking for weapons. Well, good weapons anyway. So I'm going to show you guys some decent weapons that will respawn after every blood moon. And they're relatively easy to get, so you could probably get these fairly early on in the game. But if there's a particular weapon you're looking for and it's on my list, I'm going to leave timestamps in the description below. So first up is going to be a woodcutter's axe and a double axe. Now guys, we can find these right here in Lorland Village. Right here in this little body of water. Just use your magnesis and you'll see them glowing. And guys, these are good for chopping down trees or busting open metal or wooden crates. But if you happen to be looking for some sledgehammers, then let's just head on over to Hatino Village. Then let's just make our way on over to Link's house. Say hello to Bolson while you're here. But you're going to find two of these leaned up against his house. Now these are good for opening metal crates, wooden crates, killing taluses, or busting ore. But if you're looking for a good two-handed weapon, then let's just head on over to the Woodland Tower. Now if you get here and it's raining, just build yourself a fire and sit until you have a pretty day. Because we're actually going to climb up top. And here you're going to find a good two-handed weapon, which is the Royal Claymore. Another good weapon we can find pretty early on in the game is right here on Satori Mountain. And if you'll look right underneath this stall nox, you should be able to use your magnesis and pull it out and you will find a golden claymore. But if you would like to find a bunch of weapons all at once, then let's head on over to the Gerudo Tower. And then we're just gonna jump across to this rock right here. And here it is on the map. But now when you get here, you're gonna see some rocks. Just use your stasis and then we can knock them out of the way. But this is actually just a cave of goodies, guys. We're gonna find a radiant shield, a golden bow, a Gerudo spear, edge of duality, and a moonlight scimitar in here. Now, if this is the first time you've made it to this cave, you're also gonna find a few chests in here. Another good place to get several weapons at once is let's go to the Farron Tower. And from here, we're gonna jump, I guess, southwest, and let's make our way to the Heron Lake. Here, we're gonna see a sleeping Henix. Now, he will actually have a royal broadsword, a royal bow, and a soldier's claymore around his neck. Now, you can jump from the tower, and you can land perfectly on top of him. Grab your goodies, and you can teleport out of there without even having to wake him up. But if you're looking for a multi-shot bow that will respawn, then let's make our way over to the Lanayru wetlands. And right here on this little island, you're gonna see some bustable rocks. Just bomb through them and you're gonna find a three times multi-shot forest dweller's bow laying right on the ground. Another good bow that we can get after a blood moon is the Steel Lazal bow. Now there's several places we can get these and I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the object map that I use when finding these weapons. But there are three Lazalfos in the Hebra Mountain region. They will all drop the steel Lazal bows. You can also get one of these bows right here at the Yukuku Plains. You're gonna see two Bacoblins on horseback and one of those will carry a steel Lazal bow. However, they are shooting fire arrows, so just be careful. But I really like these bows, so guys, I just pick them up whenever I can. Now let's move on to some elemental weapons. Now guys, I love elemental weapons. We can set them on fire, we can freeze them and then push them around, and we can even electrocute them, making them drop their weapon, and then we can just pick it up and use it against them. So first up is the Great Flame Blade. I'm going to show you a couple of places we can grab that, and one of which is here in the Elden Mountains, right underneath the Leviathan Bones. You might even get a chance to see Dinral fly by. But if you come here at 10 o'clock or after 10 o'clock in the middle of the night, that's when the Bokoblins will be asleep, and then you can just sneak in, grab the Great Flame Blade, and sneak out. Another good place to get a Great Flame Blade is right here at the Ancient Tree Stump. You're going to see a couple of Bokoblins, take care of them, then you're going to see a Moblin, but then you're going to find the Great Flame Blade sticking right in the tree stump. Okay, next, let's go to the east side of the castle right here in the Hyrule Forest Park, and we're going to find a Stallnox. Now, guys, he's going to have a Flame Spear. Now, this is one of my favorites. I always have a Flame Spear. I love to use it to set fires, and if I ever need one, this is where I come back to get one. But just shoot him in the eye. When he falls down, you can run up and well on him until he's about to stand up. When he does, you might want to get out of there, and then just repeat the process until the eye falls out. Once the eye falls out, we want to run up and kill it. If not, he's going to pick it back up and stick it in his eye socket. But once you take care of him, he will drop you the flame spear. 
And I don't know if you guys are aware, but Stalnox will drop elemental weapons. Just like the one here in the Icefall foothills in the Hebra region, he is going to drop us the Great Frostblade. Now guys, you can also get one of these inside the castle. Or if you want to, you can just come back here every Blood Moon and he can drop you one as well. Now to get a Frost Spear, there's a couple of different places we can get these. One of which is right here at this Skull Encampment in the Hebra Mountains. You're going to see some Lazalfos. I just took care of them with bomb arrows. Now guys, if you're unaware, we can get unlimited bomb arrows. If you don't know how, you can click the link in the upper right hand corner. I'll also leave a link in the description. So just take care of these guys and one of them is going to drop the Frost Spear. We can also get a Frost Spear from another Stalnox right down here in the Harfen Valley. Just take care of him and he'll drop you a Frost Spear. Now before we move on to the Thunder Elemental weapons, I just want to show you guys that if you're looking for Elemental Rods, we can actually get them all in one place. We can get the Blizzard Rod, the Thunderstorm Rod, and the Meteor Rod right here in Crinnell Hills. Now if you want the Fire Rod, it's a little, I guess, southeast to the other ones. It kind of sits off by itself. But all of these Elemental Rods you can pretty much get in one area. But now let's head on over to the Tabantha Tower, and all we're going to do is jump over here to Kucho Mountain. And if you just kind of run right here in between the rocks, you're going to find a great thunder blade stuck right here in the ground. But now if we head on over to the Gerudo region, we are going to find another Stalnox. He will also drop a great thunder blade, and he's going to drop a Moonlight Scimitar and a Royal Harbord. But now if you want to get the Thunder Spear, let's make our way to the Ridgeland Tower. And if you'll just look down, you're going to see lots of enemies. There's going to be a Wizrobe. There's a bunch of Lazalfos. A couple of them are in the water. Some of them are walking around with bows. So just be careful. This might not be the ideal place to get these Thunder Spears. But if you take care of these guys, you will actually find two Thunder Spears here. Now, if you don't want to deal with all of those Lazalfos, an easier place to get a Thunder Spear is right here in the Rowan Plains. You're going to see a Stalnox, take care of him, and he will drop you a Thunder Spear. But now, if you have defeated all four Divine Beasts, one of the best places to get elemental weapons is right here at the Colosseum Ruins. However, there is a Lionel at the bottom, so if you don't know how to kill a Lionel, or you're uncomfortable killing a Lionel, you can click the link in the upper right hand corner. I will also leave a link in the description, and I'll show you exactly how I taught myself to kill a Lionel. But take a look at this Colosseum. The top level is going to be your Thunder Elemental Weapons, the middle is going to be Ice, and the bottom is going to be Fire. As long as you have killed all four Divine Beasts, you can come back here after a Blood Moon and get any Elemental Weapon that you would like, except for the Rods. Now let's head on over to the Tina Kosai Shrine. Now guys, this is one of my favorite shrines because it is going to give you an ancient shield, sword, and battle axe. And these are some great weapons to stock up on. And these guys will respawn after a blood moon just like everything else. So it's just a good way to stock up on some ancient parts and some ancient weaponry. So if you'd like to see a little trick on how to defeat these guys and take no damage, I'm going to leave a link in the description. But if you would like to see how to get the Royal Guards weapons, click here. And if you guys know of any other weapons that respawn after a Blood Moon and you'd like to mention them, please leave them in the comments below to help others. And I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoy content like this, show me with a like. And if you're new to the channel, I hope you consider subscribing. And I'll just catch you guys next time.